In this video, I'm gonna show you how I got this print from this old 1950s camera that cost me just 20 pound on eBay. There are many folding cameras from this era, all with different formats, lenses, and shutters. And if you've never shot or owned a folding camera before, then have a look out for one of these Zeiss Icon Netars online, especially if you've never tried medium format, because they are a great way to step up from 35 millimeter. There are many to choose from, all with slight variations, and this one is a model 518 stroke 16 with a Vero shutter and a Nova f4.5 lens. It's not the fastest lens in the world by any means, and with shutters of only being 25, 75 and 200 of a second, you're up for a challenge with slower speed films. But once you get used to it and shoot in the right conditions, you'll be amazed at the quality these old classics can give you in return for your money. So today I thought I'd come out with the Zeiss Icon Netto, this 1950s folding camera. I've got two rolls of film, one inside already, which is Ilford's FP4. Solid film FP4, solid black and white film, 125 ISO. And I've also bought out of me a roll of Agfa 100 APX, which expired in 2009, so the original Agfa. But back to these folding cameras. These things are absolutely fantastic. This one is a 6x6 medium format camera. Man, you can pick these up so cheap online. This one I think cost me 20 quid. I recently got one for a friend of mine which cost about 50 quid. Uh, you know, up and down, you get them while, while you can. And, and I've got another one for a friend about a year or so ago and that was about 30 quid. So these things are pretty cheap online. And because of the size, six by six medium format, they can produce some really nice quality images because it's also got a fantastic lens on it as well. The lens on this camera is a Novar Anastigma. I'm always butchering these names. Novar Anastigma. It's a 75 millimeter lens and the apertures range on it from f4.5 all the way to f22. The shutter speeds are a little bit limited. On this one you've got bulb mode and then you've got 125th, 175th and 200th of a second. There's no bells and whistles on this camera either. There's no auto focusing. There's, you know, there's, there's no through the lens viewing. You can't see. It's just a view camera. Um, so basically just a lens shutter and a box and the film sits at the back. Um, but I have got this on top, a little range finder, so I can look through there, and on there it tells me the distance from my subject to the film plane, which uh, this one is in meters, but the lens is actually, or the, the um, yeah, the lens is in feet. So I've got a little tiny cheat code on the back for myself, which gives me a little conversion. So all I need to do is find a distance from my subject to the back of the camera using this little tiny rangefinder on here, Rowy rangefinder, and then use my cheat sheet to dial it in. So I had a bit of time on my hands. George is being groomed at the moment, and I've got three hours to kill while he's sitting in the groomers. So I thought I'd come out and take some pictures around these streets. I'm going to be walking around the back streets looking for all these old houses that, you know, have been standing here for a long time, um, well over 100 years, I should imagine and just take some pictures that I can go back and develop and you know maybe see one that I like, see a negative that I like that I can make a print of in the dark room. You never know until you get back. Sometimes you can sit there and think to yourself, oh, you know, I don't know what to take pictures of today. And you, you ponder on it so much, you end up not going anywhere. Um, so that's why sometimes I just like grabbing my camera, going around the streets, not really wasting, but shooting a couple of, couple of films and seeing what I get back at the end of it. Sometimes I can get quite surprised uh, after I've made a print. So I actually like that, that print. It looks nice, you know. Look at this street. You can imagine what this street would have been like 100 years ago without cars. Can you see it? Look at all them lovely rows of houses. And now we're absolutely full of cars in this day and age. So. I don't really want to get those cars in any of my shots, so more than anything I'll be looking up at the aerials. I don't really want to get satellite dishes in if I can help it. So this side of the street is where the sunlight is, so I'm just going to do a quick metre reading uh, and then take a few shots as I go down that street. I'll do a quick metre reading now, know what to dial into the camera. I don't have to keep the metre reading as I go along. Just do one metre reading out in the sunlight, back towards what would be my camera. So the meter gave me f16 and 125th of a second so i'm going to go to 1 200th of a second and shoot at f11 and then i don't really need to use a range finder i can just set my zone focusing on what i want to take pictures of which is mo mostly going to be looking up at those chimneys and lovely nice clouds up there you can see and these old chimney pots if i can get those uh, satellite dishes out of my photographs i don't really want them so 
there's a few spaces along the way uh, that I can hopefully get. Yeah, it's quite strange. Could you imagine if you were looking out of your bedroom window and you saw someone looking up at it taking a photograph? <laughs> You'd be like, what the fuck are they doing down there? I would be. I'd be like, why are you taking pictures, mate? Because you're interested, you know? Uh, so far, no one's asked me, but I'm sure if I stick around long enough, someone might do. You just got to be honest and say, look, I'm just, um, you know, recording these houses on film um, for my geeky collection of house photography, you know. <laughs> Let's see what else we can get. I like this shot here with these uh, uh, telephone lines going across. I'm going to get the um, satellite dishes in and some modern aerials, but we've got nice clouds, chimney pots. Done. <laughs> Just simple photography. You know, it doesn't have to be absolutely fantastic stuff. As long as I'm out here enjoying myself shooting this old camera uh, and I can get a print at the end of it, I'm happy. Yeah. Look at these big ass houses here, look. Goes all the way down there. I'm gonna have a little walk along and see if there's anything up there I can get a nice picture of. If you're enjoying the content that I make, then maybe you'd like to support the work I do on the channel by joining me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube member. For as little as $2 or £2 a month, you can get access to my other videos and posts as well as early releases. Or you can grab some merch or buy me a coffee. This helps me massively to continue making content. Or simply subscribe, hit the like button, sit back, relax and enjoy the videos. Cheers! And I haven't changed my meter in at all. Uh, everything's been the same. F11, 1 200th of a second. Uh, I'm choosing this one because it's got a bit of... It looks a bit dilapidated. The, um, the window seals and stuff look all sort of faded, cracked. Uh, so we do this on infinite. So anything between nine feet and infinite is gonna be in focus. Let's take that shot. There it goes. I've just got that then when there's a seagull going over. And this is a thing, if you get a little bit bored sometimes in your photography and you really think there's no photographs to be had, there's plenty. I'm just walking up and down here, there's a bench, there's some old railings going on, maybe not so much for this camera, but there's quite a lot I can get composition wise. See, oh, look at that old shed there, look at that old shed, can you see that old shed? That's going to make a nice photograph, I'm going to get that one while I can. I like that, if I can get that brick wall out, I don't know if I can, but maybe that, that's a new, no, it's okay. Try that. There you go, F8 175th. I changed the um, settings there. Interesting. Now, this is more like it. Look, washing hanging up. Got all these old sh back of them houses. Look, now they look even more older. Look at this one, really run down. You probably can't see it with the GoPro. And so far, so good. No one's come out yet and said, Oi, mate, why are you taking a picture of my, of my bathroom? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm allowed to, I'm on the street. But if they do, you just gotta, you know, be polite. I mean, there's no reason to be um, argumentative about anything. Just be polite, explain what you're doing. And generally people are fine. And this is when you're crossing the line a little bit, going onto someone's path, but okay. We've got that shot there a little bit, this wall bit, that wood, and some of the buildings in the background. <laughs> like this one here, this old, uh, these old dilapidated steps. Oh, there's a seagull there, as if I'm flying or not. Ah, oh, I think I might have got it. <laughs> I'm up on Main High Street now, Newport High Street on the Isle of Wight. I'm going to be going down that way in a moment. Uh, there's an old pub I want to take a picture of, and also the Town Hall, which is great, but I've never noticed this before, this old house here, look, Carisbrook Road, proper old. We'll get a photograph of that, it's all wonky and everything. <laughs> look at this building, there's a little plaque over there saying 1872. Um, I don't know what, it must have been something, oh it's a Baptist church, okay. A Baptist church, but that might look nice. See that angle there? Let's get that on the uh, icon.
this old pub here, the Castle Inn. Now this thing is centuries old. An old boozer. I've been in there a few times. Have some good bands in there on a Friday night. This old pub, look at that, look at the brickwork. Um, looks a little bit modern with all the flowery stuff going on though. Nothing stopping me getting photograph of the window. See the window. It's round the back of it. Should we have a look round the back? Let's get a picture of uh, let's get a picture of the window. That's the last frame I've got on the FP4, and then I'll switch over films for the town hall. So I've done 12 shots on the FP4. I've got a feeling that I uh, missed a frame somewhere, but um, never mind. I've got another roll of film now for the town hall. Uh, that's the FP4 done. Rewinding that all the way back, and I've chosen this little tiny shady spot here uh, to take the film out and put the new one in. That's the thing I enjoy about shooting film. Is it nothing has to be perfect you know I don't have to go out and make the best photograph that I've ever made if I want to do that I can plan stuff choose the right film choose the right camera choose the right lens or whatever but stuff like this I just enjoy shooting these old cameras and at the same time documenting where I live you know or the place where you know the town the towns where I live um, I've got loads of negatives of stuff like this and they might they don't as I say they don't have to be the best photographs in the world but they're my photographs and I've enjoyed the experience of shooting and developing film. Later on, uh, I'll get back, I'm gonna show you um, developing the film and also going in the dark room and making a print of one of the photographs. If, so if you wanna stick around or skip forward, it's up to you. I'm gonna to go to the town hall now and shoot this film around the town hall. And I've also got a uh, rotary device that I'll be using, a rotary processor for processing my black and white film, kindly sent to me by Filmomat. And I'm gonna be, um, using that I've been getting used to that I'll be doing a video on that in a, in a while um, but I'll just show you a little bit of using that as well so this is really easy to load this camera in it goes Man, I don't know what these one of what these cameras were used for back in the day um, were they used for press photography obviously six by six you can get a pretty good um, contact print out of it for your photographs or your family albums I think they were mainly used for families um, they're very easy to use f8 all the way you've got two little red dots one on the uh, on the aperture and one on the focus so you line those two red dots up and you just shoot f8 uh, 175th of a second or whatever in the right conditions obviously and uh, you know shoot away to your heart's content anything with 13 feet and beyond is going to be in focus that's what the manual says so relatively easy to use no fuss photography but with a 6x6 negative you can I'll get some quality pictures out of it. So this is our, our local town, Newport on the Isle of Wight. This is the town square all around this area. In fact, it's called St. James's Square. And this uh, old monument here, I'm gonna take a photograph of that. With all the people in the background as well, just a bit of daily life. See how close up I can get on these uh, foot scrapers here. These were put on these houses or these places um, years ago. Before they had, they had pavements, it would all be muddy, so you'd scrape your mud off your feet there uh, before you entered. Had to be very, <laughs> very steady there. Uh, here's the town hall. But look, it's all got scaffolding around some of it. That's a shame. I don't really want to get scaffolding in the shot. You can see there. But at least I've got some angles. Just all that, all that scaffolding. We don't want all that, do we?
Hello, mate. All right? Yeah, very well. Some little yeah, it's alright, isn't it? Yeah, if it works. <laughs> is it your bike? Yeah, it is. Nice. Yeah, I love it, man. Give us your details. I'll send you a picture of it, mate, when it's done. Oh, yeah. You said if... on my number. Huh? You on my number? Instagram or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If it comes out, alright. Done. <laughs> so I've got one more shot left in the camera. Look, I've been talking to this bloke about film photography. <laughs> <laughs> you don't turn the stone. Man, what a joy these cameras are to use. These little folding cameras, like I said, they're cheap as chips to buy online. You know, um, I told you the prices earlier. I think this one cost me 20 quid. Um, but boy, do they work well. I've been shooting this mostly on F8 today around here, just looking up at buildings and taking pictures. And, you know, nothing special, nothing creative, nothing just <laughs> groundbreaking in photography, just photographs and things that I like and also taking pictures of things and thinking I wonder how that will look um, when I get back so um, I'm going to snap this last shot off and get back and develop and I'll show you guys the negatives I'll show you the developing process and also get in the dark room and choose a print to make I'll show the print process as well so this video is going to probably bang on a little bit longer than normal um, but I'll put chapter markers in if you guys want to jump in there and, and, and go to the next next phase uh, Man, like I said, just a joy to use. I'm on the AG for 100 now. So, yeah, one frame, one frame left to shoot. I don't know what I'm going to shoot it on. But, um, and if you're lucky, if you're lucky, you'll get a decent one. Um, and if you're unlucky, you'll get one that's not working properly. But my experience, I've got quite a few of these folders and I've had a few in over the years and also given them away to people as well. And they've all worked really well. Um, never had a trouble. Maybe the slower speeds, you know, maybe on the slower speeds they might not work so great, but certainly on the faster, the upper scale of the speeds, they tend to work really well. And the lenses are mustard on them as well, so sharp. But um, it's a, such a good, fun camera to use. And I'll tell you what, if you get the right photograph in the right light and it's done its job well, that 6x6 six six negative will give you a wonderful, uh, nice, clean image to print in the dark room or on your inkjet printer or scan or whatever you guys do so i'm going to um <laughs> try and wake this bloke up and carry on talking about film photography so as i get onto the developing of the negatives here's a machine that i've never used before it's a rotary film processor from filmomat and the guys at filmomat recently sent me one to try out and i've been using this for the past few weeks on various films including color films there are many of these kind of machines out on the market and I'll be making a video on this over the coming weeks after a bit more practice but for my black and white films I've been getting some fantastic results. It's a continuous rotation development so you need to knock some time off your regular handheld inversion technique and I've been practicing and writing down my own times. And because the tank is on its side rotating continuously, I only need enough developer in the tank to cover the lower part of the spiral, which is great as I'm only using 100 millilitres of developer and 100 millilitres of water for my one part to one part dilution. I just put the timer on and let it rotate back and forth until the time is up and do the same with the fixer too. I'm still in the experimental stages with it to see how it will fit into my own workflow, but as it stands, I've been enjoying the results from this process. And if you're interested in getting your hands on one of these for your own colour and black and white developing, there's a link in the description and a 10% discount code. So the Agfa APX100, I've been getting great results with this processor using D23, one part to one part, for 7 minutes instead of my usual handheld time of 10 minutes. And as you can see, the negs look great and easily printable in a darkroom. It was my first time developing the FP4 with this machine and I winged it at just 6 minutes. I do feel like these negs could have done with another minute of rotation, so that's noted in my little developing notebook. One thing people are going to ask is what about the contrast or sharpness or accutance of the film? Well, the contrast is going to build the longer that I develop, so there's no problem there with the rotary process. As for the sharpness or accutance, that's something that I need to keep an eye on because without standing in between inversions, the grain structure in the film can end up a little bit soft around the edges, but so far I've not noticed a lack of sharpness, or at least with the D23 developer that I've been using. So it's just something that I need to keep an eye on. Let me know in the comments what your views are.
So I'm putting my test strip right across the top of the building where I can see a little bit of sky and some of the building as well to give me an idea. I'm using f-stop printing, so I'm not doing this in normal seconds, increments of seconds, I'm doing it in increments of f-stops uh, using an f-stop timer, which you can see over here. I'll cover that in another video, but uh, let's carry on doing this test strip anyway. Probably can't see too well because of the red light, but I can see roughly what I'm doing. So it's just exactly the same as normal, except I'm not counting seconds, I'm counting fractions if seconds if you like, or f-stops. Quite a common technique. It's just kind of fine-tuning your prints. And I've found this way recently to be a lot easier. I used to do this a long time ago, but I never had the timer to fully commit to it. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. So I've just done seven increments. Let's get this developed, stopped and fixed, and I'll show you. In goes the test strip. So I've got two, um, let's put my timer on so I know how long it's in there for. I've got two prints that I want to develop. Um, this one here of the town hall, and also that kid's motorbike. He gave me his Instagram profile. I couldn't somehow message him. He must have had it blocked or something, or he's blocked me from the past. Um, so I'm going to make him a print and I'll uh, walk in there and give him the print of his motorbike. Nice young lad, dressed up in kind of retro 70s, 80s uh, mod era. <laughs> and this test strip's coming out quite nice. This is all fresh developer as well. Um, so I know I'm getting the best out of my darkroom session this afternoon. And it's bloody hot in here because I'm in my shed and it's 30 degrees outside. So this is the uh, timer that I'm using. You can see I've got 10 seconds there as a base and I've got minus three, minus two, minus one base time, plus one, plus two, plus three. It's pretty simple, so the timer does it all for me. So I let the whole paper expose for that long and then I just simply cover one seventh of the paper and the next section and the next section. You can see the timer's working out the different seconds for me. And then when I finally get to the end of my test print, which is seven increments. You can notice it's getting longer now. There you go, that's the end of it, and I'll show you what the test strip looks like. And here's my test strip here. So I've got some of the top of the um, uh, building and also some of the sky. So if we start at this end, this would be the minus three, Minus two, minus one, that's my base time, which was 10 seconds, we know that. So then this would be plus one. Can't really see it on there. Minus, <laughs> trying to work in the dark room around cameras is a nightmare. Minus three, minus two, minus one, that's the base time of 10 seconds there. And we've got plus one, plus two, sounds complicated, but it's easy, plus three. Okay, so now I look at my test strip. So this is my base time here, B for base. So I'm looking, that's a bit too light. Actually, I'm working not too bad here, plus one. You can see I've got detail in the sky, that's too dark. I've got a feeling plus one might be a little bit too light. So I'm gonna go in between plus one and plus two here. And I'll just go back to my timer. So base time is 10 seconds plus one is 14.1 seconds and I had a feeling that was just a little bit too light and plus two 20 seconds is too dark so I need to go in between that so I just choose half a stop I go to one third of a stop and go up and it gives me 17.8 so I just need to do projection time at 17.8 so it's just a different way of making test strips or making prints it's a little bit more accurate for when you're dodging and burning and also when you're making reprints as well in different sizes um, it's much easier to jump up in stops than it is in seconds. So let's try and make a print. This is uh, Kentmere Lustra paper. I usually go for gloss but I've decided to try the Lustra for a, a change, chop and change sometimes. Uh, it's already on the clock, 17.8 seconds. So, so off we go, 17.8 seconds. Done. And in goes the paper. So this is only one test strip and one piece of paper that I've used so far trying to make this print. 
and from this one I can establish if I like the print I can keep it as it is or I can then start doing any dodging and burning that I might need to do but I don't think so um, it is what it is for me anyway I don't need to go wasting paper I'm just enjoying myself making prints in the dark room if it's something that I really want then I spend a bit more time and a bit more paper on it so that's my final print there you can see that was the first one I wasn't quite happy I needed to do a little tiny bit of burning up here just to pop that flag in the sky but also inside these inside the pillars here on the building wall itself in the back there so I did a bit of burning on this side and just a little tiny bit of burning around here and managed to darken these areas down and the prints come out really nice sharp as well just see a little bit of movement on that flag and you can see if I just put the test strip up against the actual print that's where I went in between the plus one and the plus ten so that was a little bit too light that was a little bit too dark so I just went straight in the middle and that timer did all the hard work for me so there's a print there of that young lad's motorbike or scooter I call it a motorbike <laughs> probably cringed at that it's a scooter uh, but yeah that cool young lad's scooter I'm gonna give him this print I'll probably walk past it at some point and uh, put it in an envelope and give it to him put a little bit of backing board on it uh, to keep it from creasing or whatever and he can take it home and put it on his bedroom wall whatever he wants to do with it it's free anyway so I hope he likes it so yeah so from my dog having his grooming done and me have to wait around three hours I thought I'd go around the town and take some photographs and uh, come back with some nice negatives and a little print here of our local town hall uh, you know sort of stuff that many of us don't think about because we see it every day we see all our shops we see all our buildings every day but until you actually walk around board with a camera in your hand it might make you want to take some photographs of the stuff that's around you and uh, you know one day i've always said these buildings will be gone or changed in some in some way shape or form and you've got your photographs or your negatives uh, to look back on and as for that zeiss icon uh, netar camera like i said at the start it's a fantastic way to get into medium format or get away from 35 millimeter it's an inexpensive way as well there's a ton of those cameras out there just make sure that they're working before you buy them make sure you ask the right questions and i'm sure that there's always a back to it if um if they're not working in other words you can return and get your money back but there's plenty out there and i've never had any real major faults with any of them that i've ever purchased like i said sometimes the slower speeds some of the different shutters have got different speeds on sometimes the slower speeds the one seconds the two seconds etc always a little bit dodgy but the faster speeds are okay and that's all i want it for just walking around the streets shooting at you know 175th of a second or 1 200th of a second and that will do me i'm happy come back with some nice photographs anyway guys hope you enjoyed that video a little bit long-winded i know a little bit of a darkroom session in there watch out for that video on the film and that rotary processor that i'm going to be making and also some stop uh, f-stop printing videos that will be coming up soon and if you follow me on patreon and also on the youtube members area i'm going to put an extended video of this of me walking around the streets explaining the compositions uh, that i was doing at the time so a little bit lengthy but i'll be putting that out there for you guys uh, a little bit of extra content for you as well i'll catch you next time